Rare Gem Productions proudly presents Entrepreneurially Thinking. Entrepreneurially Thinking is a presentation of BioSTL and CET, the Center for Emerging Technologies, changing the way you view new ventures and activating your entrepreneurial mindset, empowering you to create new pathways for business success in the St. Louis marketplace and beyond. Here's your hosts, Cheryl and Christy. Now let's get thinking entrepreneurially. Welcome back to the Entrepreneurially Thinking Podcast. I'm Christy Maxfield. And I'm Dr. Cheryl Watkins-Moore. I lead our STEM Entrepreneurial Inclusion Initiative for BioSTL here for our region. Hey, girl. How are you? How I am okay. I was going to say that practically rolled off your tongue. It's like you've said it before. Like it wasn't the first time. <laughs> <laughs> we're having one of those days. But it was masterful. I think that's actually the cut we're going to use from now on. I know. I don't um, have to repeat that well, And you've got a long-ass title, yeah. is all I'm saying. You know. Um, because you're <laughs> You're a big, important person. I don't know about that. Uh, I know about that. <laughs> um, and so we have we have other big, important people on our show. Yes. And we're really glad that they join us to mm -hmm. uh, make sure that we have amazing guests and really compelling interviews and episodes for you all. And so we're really excited to thank our founding sponsor, CET and BioSTL, yes. for their continued support and yes. to thank all of you for listening. Mm -hmm. Please remember to follow us on EthinkSTL, Ethink mm -hmm. Podcast, Stay Listening, Hashtags, Find Us on iTunes, Spreaker, Facebook, LinkedIn. The more oh. subscribers we have, the more likely we can stick around and keep telling you great stories. I was just thinking about stories. this. Look at all these e-things and hashtags. When we started out, we had none of that. Well, yeah, because we were still like, do we really need to be on Instagram? <laughs> exactly. And now we're all over Instagram and we we're understand. It. And, and, you know, I know how much we love the Googles. And I just want to point out that I used them earlier. And Did actually, you? there were two entrepreneurs downstairs who were asking me to, to help them explain something to their customers. And I was like, and this is when you ask a literal question of the Googles and we get a little answer. And then, then we can build our business from there. So, um, you know, I like to plug the Googles in their uh hashtagage and of all that course. kind of great stuff. I also like to plug Vision 2019, yes. which is the region's largest and only inclusion innovation conference. Yes. Tell us, who does it celebrate, educate, and support? People of color, women, and immigrant emerging entrepreneurs, as well as existing business owners. So you guys, if you want to find out more information, Talk to Siri. Tell her you want to go on. <laughs> or Alexa. <laughs> or whoever Alexa, your favorite. Whoever you like talking to. <laughs> um, and they'll give you all the, the details exactly. and get you to uh, visionstlewis.com where you can find out more information for the event on October 18th. Yes, we want to see you there. This so is going to be great. In Fifth between planning that event and, uh, and getting here, the keynote speaker for it, who's Cedric Cobb, uh, yeah. uh, one of our local celebs, and doing all that other work. Well, what are we doing today? Well, today, you guys heard of this concept concept of live, make, sell. Well, if you haven't heard of it, <laughs> it's a concept that talks about space that calls itself home to the likes of local artists, designers, makers, and entrepreneurs. We're here in St. Louis. We have this space. It's called the Del Mar Maker District, which gives all these folks, designers, makers, entrepreneurs, creative people, a place to learn, create, and thrive while injecting new life into an area along Del Mar that was longing for investment. The goal of the district is to create an environment that attracts all walks of life who live, make, and sell their goods, allowing locals and tourists to shop, learn, and socialize. So if you want to be one of those folks, or if you want to buy from one of those mm -hmm. folks... Put me in that category. Yes, that's me. <laughs> Y'all better stay listening. CET, the Center for Emerging Technologies, is a proud founding sponsor of the Entrepreneurially Thinking Podcast. We want you to know about all the great resources they provide, including the Square One Ignite and Bootcamp programs, as well as the Online Startup Toolkit. The toolkit has videos, articles, and other materials to help you build your business. For more information about CET's programs, visit CETSTL.com. And for your renewed and continued Continued support, CET, we say thank you. My name is Nick Dunn. I am the communications director for Third Degree Glass Factory, MADE, and the Del Mar Maker District. And entrepreneurial thinking to me means opening the doors to creating equitable outcomes so that anybody can access opportunities to become their own business owner and pursue their own creative interests. Joining us today is Nick Dunn, Communication Director for MADE, 
Third Degree Glass Factory and the Del Mar Maker District. Dude. Uh, so these are the two anchor institutions that are uh, going to be part of the district. Correct. Yeah. And and Nick's going to tell us all about that. He is in fact a graduate of Webster University. Mm-hmm. Um, you got your BA there. I got my MBA there. You know, mm-hmm. so we got a little something in common there. Mm-hmm. And he brings all of this marketing experiences to these three businesses and creating this exciting district for entrepreneurs in the St. Louis area. Nick, thanks for being with us yeah, today. Thank, thank you for you. having me today. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. Wonderful. I'm loving that that whole district is being re-energized, reinvigorated because mm. it was like a gap. You had that whole area and then you hit, you know, the loop. Absolutely. Yeah. So when we were coming up with this uh, maker district idea, one of the key philosophical phrases that we were using was be the center, not the edge. Uh, so, you know, Del Mar is historically known. There's a documentary specifically about this being a divide within right, the city yes. of St. Louis. Uh, so when we started thinking in terms of being the center, not the edge, you know, there, it is literally an edge between neighborhoods, both mm-hmm. short from a racial standpoint, yep. socioeconomic standpoint. Mm-hmm. And so we saw this as an opportunity as a group of creatives to mm-hmm. not to bridge the Del Mar divide because that indicates a structure, right. but to eliminate or erase or to mm-hmm. unite both mm-hmm. sides of Del Mar. I like unite. Because right? yeah. we also don't want to erase things that are on That's either right. side of that. Right. We, we want to erase the divide mm-hmm. by uni- Erase the divide but not unison. the things on either yeah. side. Got it. <laughs> right. Awesome. Well, you know, one of the things we do is just We've established your Webster bona fides, but um, right. are you actually from St. Louis? Not originally. I'm from a small town about an hour west of here, but I've lived in St. Louis long enough. What that, little town? Uh, yeah. uh, Sullivan, Missouri. Oh, um, yeah. Anyone yes. who's gone float tripping, as most yeah. Midwesterners do. Yeah. My yeah. father-in-law lives in Cuba. My husband oh. grew up in Doolittle. Okay. See? So you are on the way to yeah, both. Yeah, we've got a lot in common. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, you know, that's awesome. So you grew up there. What brought you to St. Louis? Uh, Webster. Uh, I, okay. uh, Webster was one of two colleges. I thought you were here small. before that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's small. It's small. A lot of things brought him to St. Louis. Uh, Webster University definitely drew me up here. And then once I was up here, I didn't want to go back. Um, I grew up in, you know, outside of a small town. And I always wanted to live in in the city or in an urban area. And that's, that's, yeah. So I live in the Bevo area now. Oh, Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. In the city. Yeah. Vibrant little area in the city as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So I want to just give our our listeners a little context. So if if you were listening from the beginning, Mm -hmm. you've probably heard our episode episode early, early on when Tech Shop had first come to the Cortex district. And mm-hmm. that was the makerspace that was originally erected here. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And then their business model was not successful. Right. They didn't work with either me or Cheryl. Right. Because um, <laughs> uh, then they would have been booming. I'm just saying, we would have made some tweaks. <laughs> right. Uh, but the upside of that is then the equipment is now at me. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Right. Which is Absolutely. great. Um, so tell us a little bit about, like, you know, how did that happen? Yeah. And Third Degree Glass Factory has mm-hmm. been at its location for a for long a time. Yes. yes, we have. How mm. is that connected to MADE and then sure. to this our larger idea of a district? Yeah, yeah so uh, we'll have a little history lesson here. Yes. Um, yeah, so uh, back in 2002, uh, Jim McKelvey, whom we now know from Square, Launch mm-hmm. Code, you know, um, a variety of other entities, uh, he and uh, Doug Auer uh, found this building at 5200 Del Mar um, that was run down, dilapidated, used to be an old Pontiac dealership way back mm-hmm. in the day when it was built in the 20s. So they acquired this building for twenty thousand dollars. Wow! Yeah, and they it was a fixer fixer up. Yeah. Right, <laughs> exactly. We we still have the pictures from wow. from the renovation. So the original intention of buying this building, they just wanted a place to blow glass. Mm-hmm. Right. That's all it was. And what they didn't expect, a hot, large hobby. So having <laughs> a really big space was exactly important. glass is not a cheap hobby. Right, um, right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, they employed a variety of people who were interested in learning glass blowing mm-hmm. and uh, traded classes and lessons in exchange for them literally building the studio. Oh, cool. Um, and so that's, I mean, the the collaborative idea has always been a part of the Maker District, even before we were, you know, mm. third degree was there. Mm-hmm. And then over those 16 years, uh, what they didn't expect, but what was just a natural outcome was third degree evolved from just a place to blow glass and for, you know, people to, you know, show off playing with hot molten material mm-hmm. uh, into a, uh, a multifaceted studio where we have three different glass art media, a glass art gallery mm-hmm. um, with a very robust private events uh, division. I was going to say, when we started the um, inclusion initiative, I think our second event was held at Third Degree Glass Factory. Oh, awesome. That was five years ago. Yeah. So, so that. Um, that was around the time that I had started and I was still in the events department at that mm. time. 
Um, and then I moved into marketing not long after okay. that. It's definitely evolved um, this community concept. So we have been building a community of artists, a third degree, mm-hmm. just through providing lessons and with the with showing the students with the intention that we want them to become artists and we mm-hmm. want them to start creating and selling their work. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other thing third degree did was start providing employment opportunities. Mm-hmm. So the artists would some, we would get custom order requests, uh, especially awards or custom mm-hmm. installations. Yeah. So we're creating job opportunities for the artists through there, as well as through demonstrations. We do a lot of glass blowing demonstrations at weddings. Mm-hmm. Um, there's nowhere else in St. Louis. You can do that. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then also through teaching classes. So it's not just some random people are bringing it off the street to teach these classes they're the actual right. artists who also rent time to produce the artwork our moonshot award was made. yes, yes. That's um, right. i think it was a collaboration it, well that was primarily at may at may yeah mm-hmm. but there right. was a glass aspect to there it so yeah. we'll, we'll take a little credit for that so um so okay so you take that community aspect of third mm-hmm. degree and then so when we heard the news about or when jim and doug specifically heard about tech shop going out of business that was right around uh november early to Mm mid-november of 20 what was that 2017 2017 yeah Yeah. and so right before the holidays right uh so Mm -hmm. we we, they saw that and they were like well this isn't right and you know jim uh, originally created the prototype for the square reader Mm -hmm. at a tech shop in san francisco and so he has a very you know deep emotional Mm -hmm. connection to this and so they're like we have to do something about this Mm -hmm. um so they worked with the folks over at cortex and collaborated and they opened what they called a temporary maker maker studio Mm -hmm. and maker studio was just meant for those current members uh to finish their orders for the Mm -hmm. holidays because they are entrepreneurs and you know it's the holidays they have to sustain their their living and buy their kids uh, gifts and you know um so they kept the space open through um through the holiday season um so the makers could finish their orders and then from there they started looking at you know where to move this new mm-hmm. space and that's where they found a building at 5127 Delmar right across the street most people if they haven't seen or if they've driven by it numerous times before they'd recognize it because there was a red vespa attached to the front of the building oh okay um or a red moped and so uh they found this building um it was mm-hmm. it's i think it's a total of like sixty four thousand square feet between mm-hmm. two floors it's built like a parking garage there's yes. a literal concrete ramp that goes up to the second floor from the back <laughs> oh wow uh and so they just started renovating it and within a year's time they had completely flipped the space moved all the equipment in and created a brand new space for makers um, mm. that is now locally owned and not um, un- un- uh, right exactly not under the guise mm. of a of a national corporate entity. Okay. And so we came up with the name Made, mm-hmm. which stands for Makers, Artists, Designers, Entrepreneurs. Ooh, I didn't um, know there was. I didn't a- either. Yeah, um, and, and you know it fits into that concept. It's you know it's it's a maker space, but our you know our ultimate goal is to get people. T- to have things made and then to showcase them. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so it, it fits so well. And then we took that community concept of third degree and that's what we applied to, to made. So we're encouraging that collaborative creative environment where it's not, um, it's not intended to be competitive. It's meant to be collaborative. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're seeing that a lot now, especially as we are starting to promote multimedia projects and stuff where mm-hmm. you might do something in woodworking and then, Combine it with something from the metal shop and mm-hmm. everything. So it's um, like our award because it has all yeah. these funky pieces, it was yes. right? A multi, multi-elemental piece, mm-hmm. and it, you know, and you cre- we created something beautiful yes. from doing these, applying these different media to it's great. one concept. That's yeah. awesome. I think because you didn't mention on the top floor that you guys are serving adults in the region, mm-hmm. and the Magic House just put their satellite right. Yeah. So for the kids who are younger to thirteen. That that's their maker space exactly specifically for them. Yeah. So that's really cool. So one of the things that um from very early on when they were starting to open made um and we were realizing that we're we now have entities on both sides of Del Mar. Mm-hmm. Like we have to start involving the community more mm-hmm. and doing more community outreach. I'm the communications director, so naturally that's what I was forced to do. <laughs> <laughs> Not for us. I'm doing it. Vol- yeah, you voluntold. Like and then that. you became volunteer. <laughs> right. And exactly. one day it'll be your passion. Right. But anyway. Um, and so w- one of the things that we had realized was that uh, in order to do engagement with the community, we have to start addressing some of the needs and desires of the community. And one of those things is, was a lack of resources for children. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so around the time that Tech Shop had been moved out, there was talk among the folks at Cortex about the Magic House wanting to open a permanent satellite mm-hmm. location. 
and wanting to find a place where they could provide access to low income children mm-hmm. um, where they would still have access to the same amenities without going all the way to Kirkwood. Right. right. Uh, and so we saw that as the perfect opportunity to fulfill their mission mm-hmm. of reaching low income children and putting it on the, the on the Del Mar divide. Right. Mm-hmm. And so by m- moving in the Magic House, which opened last month mm-hmm. uh, or at, it's this June month. this month. Yeah. Yeah. So in June, it opened its doors. Mm-hmm. It opened mm-hmm. its doors and let uh, and brought in the community. They did mm-hmm. a lot of community preview events yes. so that was meant specifically for mm-hmm. the people who lived around the area right. um, before the official grand opening. And it was uh I have heard nothing but amazing things from the mm-hmm. community. They're like, finally, I have a place to bring my children mm-hmm. and I don't have to drive super far. Um, you know, and so in the Magic House of Space, we don't have things like saws and, right. you know, the stuff that the adults can use. Right. But, but they're the laser cutters. Right. And <laughs> yeah. But they're settling but, torches. <laughs> I don't know. Right. But, <laughs> but there are these elements of mm-hmm. introduction, you know, to the concept of a maker mm-hmm. space. And so. One of my favorite parts of it is they have a station where you can use different colored markers mm-hmm. to draw what is essentially a circuit. And they have these little round robots that will roll along this track that you draw. And depending on the color, the pattern of the colors, they will react to that. Oh, wow! And so, you know, so if you do like green, red, blue or something along the track, once the robot gets past that, it'll spin. Oh, wow. You know, so it has certain prompts based on the colors. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And so like, it, even though you're not actually building a circuit, you are, you're getting an introduction mm-hmm. to the to concept it. of it. Mm-hmm. And so our ultimate goal is for, you know, kids who experience that space and really enjoy it and they find something they love. Mm-hmm. Once they age out at 13, they're able to go downstairs mm-hmm. and take classes or maybe even have a membership and start to build on that knowledge and yeah. potentially become a creative entrepreneur in the future. So when we come back, I'd like to find out more about how uh, MADE mm-hmm. and the other organizations there are actually engaging community. We talked about mm-hmm. how Magic House is doing it. How mm-hmm. are you guys doing that? And so we'll talk about that as yep. soon as we come back. Okay. Purpose First Advisors is proud to support the Entrepreneurially Thinking Podcast. Purpose First works with entrepreneurs and the organizations that support them to accelerate business formation, scaling, and transformational growth. For more information about how to work with Purpose First Advisors on business model validation, financial modeling, core messaging, or other growth and profitability strategies, visit PurposeFirstAdvisors.com. BioSTL is a proud founding sponsor of the Entrepreneurially Thinking Podcast. We want you to know about all the great things they are up to, including the BioSTL STEM Entrepreneur Inclusion Initiative and Fundamentals Program for early stage would-be entrepreneurs in the life sciences in St. Louis. You can learn more about all of BioSTL's programs by visiting BioSTL.org. And for your renewed and continuing support, BioSTL, we say thank you. Hi, I'm Psyche Southwell. I am the editor and creator of Economy of Style, a notebook on evolving trends, fashion, sense, and sense, the kind that go to king. <laughs> um, entrepreneurially thinking means finding creative and innovative ways to meet a need and solve a problem. We were talking about how the Magic House had to sort of assess the need and identified mm-hmm. the need to be in a satellite like location that offered the same amenities to the participants, particularly the children that coming there as they would experience at their flagship location in Kirkwood. Mm -hmm. But in general, when you say, you know, engaging the community, how have you really assessed the needs of the people who live in that community? Uh, It really came down to listening. Um, Mm -hmm. So did you have listening sessions? Did you go knock door to door? Did you show up at community you know, like neighborhood association type things. Yeah, all, all of those. Of that, that's how it started yeah. was um, just really reaching out um, around the time that um, the Magic House was getting ready to open. I was talking with their marketing director, Carrie Hutchcraft, who was amazing. Right before this all happened, the Riverfront Times came out with a report about how there's a technological divide along mm-hmm. Del Mar as well, yep. where the communities to the north don't necessarily have um, the same level of access to the internet and everything as folks to the South For do. Sure. And so one of the f- initial things they did is they actually employed people from the community to go out and put door hangers on people's doors just to mm-hmm. let them know this space was opening up. Mm-hmm. But in addition to that, and this is what really has been driving the Delmar Maker District concept, is the point of community engagement mm-hmm. and working with the folks who live in the area who would be immediately impacted by any mm-hmm. investment. And making sure that we're not just going in, like we're not a bunch of 
guys with a bunch of money who are going mm-hmm. to build, you know, high rises right. that mm-hmm. they that we give them a stake in what goes into this into this district. Mm-hmm. And they want to see things change. They are so excited to see mm-hmm. someone coming in and investing in their neighborhood finally. Mm-hmm. So just by sitting down and listening to them, uh we've been able to make some pretty substantial decisions and know what direction we should be heading. Because they're essentially one of your core customers, even if they exactly. never set foot right. in either space or never purchased mm-hmm. anything per se. Mm-hmm. When you're making an investment as substantial as putting businesses in a specific location and envisioning an entire district, mm-hmm. they are your your core customers. Right. The people mm-hmm. who live there already, who right. have been there for decades, are your core customers. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. So um, we actually uh, formed a Del Mar Maker District Development Committee. That can, mm-hmm. It's a volunteer committee that consists of residents who live in Academy Sherman Park, uh, West End neighborhood, as well as Central West End. Wonderful. And uh, as well as um, some people who live outside the district who, you know, might have some expertise in certain areas, sure. re- mm-hmm. real estate or um, education stuff like that but you're recognizing the lived experience of the residents as expertise exactly which mm-hmm. is really important i mean we don't right. tend to think of lived experience as making one an expert mm-hmm. right it exactly. very much does exactly um mm-hmm. so we have one guy who um attends the development committee meetings who has lived in the academy neighborhood for since the 1950s mm-hmm. and so he has lived through white flight through major disinvestment in his neighborhood he's seen sure. the decline mm-hmm. just on his street you know much less or right. his entire neighborhood um, and so when he came to this meeting and he, he heard what we were talking about, I think the meeting we talked about um, green infrastructure, you know, pedestrian crossings, beautifying the medians, mm-hmm. um, stuff like that. He was like, I'm so glad to see that people are coming in and actually want to hear what we have mm-hmm. to say and know about our experience. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of people in the neighborhood who are creative. Mm-hmm. They just don't have access to the space. I was going to say you have a lot of people who are doing things right now but not with the right tools Mm -hmm, exactly you know they are or just in isolation right so i imagine part of what we all know is that when we're around people who Mm -hmm. are also doing things like we're doing Mm -hmm. we get new ideas and camaraderie and community Mm -hmm. and all those exactly back to that collaborative the the collaborative idea of you Mm -hmm. know um third degree and made that we want people to inspire one another absolutely because if you're talking about somebody who does not have the resources to develop a prototype because they live in, you know, maybe these neighborhoods. Now you have a place to go. Mm-hmm. They can teach you about the different, you know, tools that are there and hopefully show you how to use that. Right. So that goes hand in hand with spurring innovation, jobs, wage, all of that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't remember the exact statistic, but, you know, um, small business owners create about 80 percent of the new jobs yes. in oh, this yeah. economy mm-hmm. and so that's invaluable yeah, um, and new small business new, right. Right? exactly i mean not yeah. just we love our folks who've been around for right. 30 or 40 years but we also know you've got to create some new new business right. exactly to do that. exactly mm-hmm. so how is the you know one space makes a, a studio two spaces make a theme how does one go from there to saying, <laughs> and there's district. an entire district? Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we are, um, we're working with the folks at, at the Washington University. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, a, it's a really long acronym. Oh, it's I'm sure. It's re- like Urban Medical something, Center something, something. Real Estate mm-hmm. Development Corporation. Yep. Uh, so we're, we're working with the folks there to really get to know how to do this because none of us have done mm-hmm. this before. Mm-hmm. And so the Maker District is still in its infancy, but this gives us an opportunity to work with this development committee as well as the neighborhood organizations to really make sure we go about this as transparently and equitably as possible. Mm -hmm. So what do you envision, even just in these early stages, we've got glass blowing, we've Mm -hmm. got makerspace with everything from sewing to acetylene torches, right? Uh, Um, uh, (laughs) As far as I know, yeah. And and, uh, children's makerspace. Mm -hmm. So what else is in a district that is anchored by these two? Well, um, and I, I, you've, I believe you covered that at the top was that it's um, to establish a community of, of makers, artists, um, mm-hmm. and those people who can live off the income that they make from whatever it is that mm-hmm. they create. So that that's really what drives it. But we we really don't know what's going to come in next. So retail so probably, I, I but can, we're we're still in the formation yeah, stage. We definitely want some more retail. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, we you can't have a community of artists without coffee. Uh, so we food coffee exactly right, right. right so the only food that we have in uh, uh in the delmar maker district proper right now is uh the delmar lee's Ch- uh, chinese chop suey he's been there longer than any mm. of us i was gonna say he's been mm. right yeah. next to the third degree glass factory since the very beginning like, right like yeah. you said he was there for he, he right. was, they were actually in our building um before we had to repair the facade you know old buildings right. yeah uh, and so we moved him into his own building and got a new kitchen and everything. Everything. He's oh, really okay. happy about that. But 
but uh, so we're looking for other food yeah, establishments and nothing, retail. And, even if you go towards Kings High, was a Burger King and a KFC right, yeah, or something just like that. Fast yeah. food. So yeah. Um, so yeah, we're just we're just looking for other opportunities to help cultivate a community. So mm-hmm. uh, for me personally, one of my goals is to get a credit union into mm. the Maker District because. Yeah. You have to have uh, finance these things exactly, and that is a community that is largely unbanked. There right. is a mm-hmm. there is a pretty long drive to get to uh, mm-hmm. any bank right. um, from that area from Academy. That's one of my personal goals is try to get a credit union mm-hmm. in there. But any other resource um, that we can find that is going to not only create a community of, of artists and entrepreneurs, but also support it. Yeah. I had the pleasure of meeting this woman. Her name is Sheba Muhammad. Yes. Uh, yes. She, oh, yeah. you, you met her. We have okay. interviewed her. That's awesome. Yes. Uh, I, I love her. Pro- the Maker's Program. So Manal. That's a good. Right? You remember Sheba that. Sheba Muhammad. Her, her product her line, line is Ma- Oh, Manal. Manal. Yes. So that's her line. Uh, I met her um, in the context of the Maker's Program. Yes. The non- that's the other thing she right, does. The, mm-hmm. the nonprofit uh, cohort for Black and Latino. Makers. Mm-hmm. I actually went to her first Makers Mart, which was at the completion of her cohort. Yes, and it was awesome just because mm-hmm. you could see that these people had sales training and oh, they yeah. were they knew how to sell their product and they loved what they mm-hmm. were doing and it, you felt that passion. Um, and so we, so I've been able to connect with her and I would. We are really hoping that we'll be able to bring her into the district. That way, we're able to oh, cultivate great. cultivate a, a wider and more diverse community mm-hmm. of entrepreneurs. And it sounds like the process is open still at this mm-hmm. point. So, for the people who live in and around that district, yeah. mm-hmm. there's still an opportunity to be an active part of that decision. Oh yeah, process. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as we're going through kind of the more, uh, I would say, boring, you know, legislative mm-hmm. aspects of creating a formal district and mm-hmm. establishing entities and stuff like that, we want to set a new precedent for transparency. Mm-hmm. We want to not only have this development committee, but also take their ideas and then go to Academy Sherman Park neighborhood, Central West End, and say, mm-hmm. hey, here's what this committee of people who represent you are wanting to do. What do you think? Yeah. Right. So like we bring them essentially a first draft and then and we can well, in the community will say. So this is real community involvement. And if mm-hmm. you live in those neighborhoods that are that that surround this district, I would encourage you. This is a great opportunity to get involved. Mm-hmm. As it's growing and yeah. have your input, you know, um, really count. Yeah, mm-hmm. really count. So in the meantime, you just had your first Del Mar Makers Fair yes. and you continue yeah. to have third Fridays at the Glass Factory. Yeah. So what was the fair? I know like we've had a lot of rain in St. Louis. And <laughs> yeah. I was a little worried about uh, y'all. <laughs> you know, a lot of a lot of people are really, you know, bothered by how much rain we've had. Just, but yeah. let me tell you, the rain on the day of the Maker Fair was more of a blessing than a curse. Okay. Um, so, you know, Del Mar has these really big grass lots yes. um, mm-hmm. that that we currently own and planning on developing at some point in the future mm-hmm. um whatever that might mean but we were gonna have the makers fair on there this past weekend the forecast five o'clock on friday <laughs> said it was gonna be cloudy all day maybe a little humid we're like great we're gonna have this mm-hmm. outdoors it's gonna be fantastic wake up at six o'clock oh. in the morning and it's rain <laughs> all day yeah so in the spur of the moment our membership director made emily l hoffer she decided we're gonna move it all inside mm-hmm. good uh and you know made on the lower level is 32 000 square feet we had to push some tables aside yeah. but we managed to fit i was gonna say you guys have a big space to do that <gasps> right mm-hmm. so we managed to fit 48 vendors we wow. were, were supposed mm-hmm. to have 90 Ooh. um if if that were the case, that we would have had a different um, <laughs> something different going on. But we had uh, between forty five and fifty makers mm-hmm. um, booths. Uh, we moved them all inside, and then we invited the public out. And then you know the storm broke at about one o'clock, two o'clock, yep. and uh, sun but, came out exactly. Mm-hmm. But even before and after that, we had a steady flow of people right mm-hmm. as we opened at ten o'clock. Wow! And it was through just the community's involvement. We had mm-hmm. the Academy Sherman Park set up a table to greet people there nice. because it's in their neighborhood. Yeah. You know, we gave Welcome. them a platform mm-hmm. and uh, we so we had, I want to say about 600 to 700 people wow. show up walking through the space, not only engaging with the different work areas, mm-hmm. but also seeing a variety of entrepreneurs. Um, mm-hmm. And there's this speak uh, the makers movement in general seems to be very centered around the technology and being able to use that to build items. And we didn't want to make it so focused on that because mm-hmm. there is a there is a socioeconomic um, sure. divide in there and so we opened it up to whomever we didn't charge a booth fee 
Uh, mm -hmm. And so we got some people actually from the makers program mm -hmm. uh, there, you know, selling, you know, their products. Uh, and then we also had some neighborhood organizations, Academy Sherman Park, but also mm -hmm. Great Rivers Greenway because mm -hmm. they're working on the Hodimont tracks right now. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, you know, of course, their degree set up a booth there. They hauled the oxygen tanks right across the street to, <laughs> you know, to, mel to melt glass. I was um, going to ask you, how did, you know, you could use that space. You know, had 50 in the, uh, the maid center and then <laughs> go across the street and right. have the rest of them there. Yeah. yeah. Well, Third degree's got such a busy uh, weddings, pro yeah. you know, weddings uh, season space. going on, mm -hmm. right? So we are uh, we were limited in that capacity, <laughs> but we managed to fit everyone into made and mm -hmm. like just the energy in yeah, there was yeah. amazing because it it was really collaborative. It was excited. It was mm -hmm. you know, Sounds and like so it. the the guests who came to the event as as well as the volunteers and the makers. Everybody was saying I had the best time. Good, and you know, even though it felt a little packed because we had so yeah. many people in there, everyone was like, "This is this was so great." And so we've we've decided that we're not even going to do the Maker's Fair outside anymore. We're only going to do it inside Good because that, because of the vibes. Yeah, and so we'll be able to really make a place on on. And Del you're Mar. bringing something to a community that there was nothing like you said mm -hmm. there before. And now you're bringing energy, but with it, them, yes, right. not to doing them, it, with right. them, exactly. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. So um, beyond the um the makers fair we still do third fridays every okay. month uh third friday started off as um artists at third degree doing ridiculous dangerous things with hot molten glass <laughs> while their families rolled in coolers and drank beer in front of them right. um, but it's uh it's it's evolved into um you know where we bring in local food trucks every mm -hmm. month and we have different themes every month at third degree and then with Maid's opening, we started doing Third Fridays there as well. So mm -hmm. makers could start doing demos for the general public and people can wander through. Very cool. The Magic House has free family nights on those same Third Fridays. And then we are looking to expand it into the district. So Wonderful. creating, you know, possibly a food truck park yeah. or finding other ways that people can engage with that space, not in individual closed off buildings, right. but activating Delmar and erasing that division. And yep. So when people drive through, they'll be able to see people walking back yes. and forth. Like, so I was going to ask you, because this is the district that's looking to connect all the way up through Skinker, right? Uh, no, it's it's, a, it's only f uh, from Kings Highway to Union. To Union, right? Okay. Yeah, because there are other projects that are going on along mm -hmm. Delmar, you mm -hmm. know, from Van Deventer to all the way to Skinker. Yeah. You know, we've got the East Loop, Sid. We've mm -hmm. got, um, you know, Max and Clark's working on the Delmar Clark Divine, mm -hmm. which is pretty close to us. We've also mm -hmm. got St. Louis Artworks, which is a little closer to the loop, pretty close the Hodiamont and Del Mar. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so that whole area is between be, one project yes, or another. It's going to be fantastic. Right. Mm -hmm. And so as we're working on our project, we're staying cognizant of what other people are yeah, doing. So sure. we're not stepping on any toes mm -hmm. because ultimately it's it's not one major large un umbrella group mm -hmm. that's trying to do all of this. It's individual yeah. efforts. And, and we sure want to highlight that. I was going to say, and making sure you have continuity. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so by keeping in touch with one another yep. and everything, we think that Del Mar is ripe for investment, mm -hmm. but it's happening in the right ways. Yeah. It's, it's not a big picture thing. It's really small individual components working That's all great. together. Again, so if we look at, um, you know, who's in, if we're coming to a third Friday and mm -hmm. we're looking at who's in your space, you said made is really makers, artists, designers, entrepreneurs. Yeah. Like, I always ask folks when they're sitting in your seat, you know, mm. how they self-identify. But how would you think most of the folks in Maid's space identify? Are they saying, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a small business owner, or am I just, I'm doing my thing? I think uh, the term entrepreneur is very overarching. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the other uh, makers, artists, designers, I think we've got a really good mix of those. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think there is one category that takes more of, uh, or takes up most of that population. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, because, you know, we've got, um, people doing prototypes, of course, mm -hmm. we have a guy who builds airplanes. Okay. Um, and so he, he uses the makerspace aside from the engine part, he makes and manufactures most of his other items in the space. In the space? Yeah. So I he, think he started at tech shop too. He, I think he did and also. And came on yeah. over. Cause mm -hmm. I remember there being an airplane maker there and I can't imagine there's two. So right. they're not max 70. What are those oh, things? Oh no, <laughs> they're it's not Boeing. Right. Yeah. Small compartment, <laughs> um, individual. You don't get to take a ride on one of <laughs> you, you. You, my friend, are not going to ride in right. these. Somebody else might. 
Yeah. Oh uh, so so we so we've got him. Um, uh-huh. You know, so it, you know, there's a little bit of an engineering aspect to mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Um, but then uh, you know, we've got this one guy's name is Josh, and he is getting ready to uh, do a Kickstarter for his product called Rasa Easels. R A S A. Okay. And so he has been, uh, I don't know how many prototypes he's gone through. I would say at least a hundred wow. where they are foldable easels, you know, for artists to do sure. sketching and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he's been working on the laser cutters with sheets of wood to really make sure that that design is, um, it can be folded flat or you can prop it up on your table at different angles. Mm. Um, it's, it's a really brilliant concept and you, and he's very passionate about mm-hmm. it. And so, um, he's been doing prototyping in various maker spaces for, you know, for a long time. And so he mm. finally found a maid when he moved to St. Louis. Oh wow! And so they have a Kickstarter that it's going to be starting mm. soon, but I believe they've also started selling them at, um, St. Louis art supply that's over oh, yeah. on uh, Washington. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Not too far from Bowood Farms, right, right? Right across the street, actually. Yeah. yeah, That's the kind of stuff that we're seeing is, you know, people who are thinking innovatively and mm-hmm. want to go go beyond just like, you know, the concept of making something just for artistic purposes, right, like yeah. having a, a broader deeper aspect mm-hmm. to Interesting. it but at the same time we've got plenty of artists as well um there's one uh artist his name is also josh we've got a lot of joshes <laughs> um who uses the laser cutters it made to make uh wood cut prints so you know a lot of people would actually carve out of a block yeah, of wood to yeah, make yeah. a block print but he's using the lasers to make a more intricate design then he rolls the ink over it and makes the print and nice. so that's like taking that artistic aspect to it mm-hmm. to another level like thinking outside of the more mechanical aspects and really driving that creative so if folks want to find out if they can join the maid space Mm -hmm. or visit or when your next makers fair is going to be where can they find more information or meet more joshes or meet more joshes (laughs) frankly yeah Yeah, so uh so if they are interested in more info about the district that's Mm -hmm. delmarmakerdistrict.org if they're interested in visiting made they can go to madestl.com and then third degree glass factory is stlglass.com Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for making time thank to be with you. us. Absolutely. Thank you for this opportunity. This is for Great. sharing and for getting us all excited about the yes. makers, artists, designers, and entrepreneurs at Maid. Someplace else to go shop. Right. We enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> Changing the way you view new ventures, unlocking your creativity and innovation, igniting your thinking about entrepreneurship. It's Entrepreneurially Thinking. Get connected and discover more. Visit EntrepreneurallyThinking.com to listen to all your favorite episodes and learn more about our guests, hosts, and sponsors. Feeling inspired? Be sure to share your thoughts, questions, and stories in the comments section. And don't forget to leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. The best way to show love is to share and subscribe. Let everybody know that you're entrepreneurially thinking.